coming up on this week's show. Rajan's washboard recital in New Orleans. Krista's underwater concert in Denmark. Ooh, that's so cool. And a bit of bell thumping in Bavaria. Welcome to the show. Now, if you're still dreaming of packing a suitcase and heading off on your travels, although you probably can't do that just yet, stay with us for the next half hour and hopefully we'll give you some inspiration as we take a look back at some of our favorite films and destinations here on the show from the past few years. And this week, our choice definitely has a musical note as the team attempts to play a tune or two. So let's kick things off with a trip that Rajan made to the deep south of America back in 2016. Now he was there to learn about a style of music called Zydeco, but little did he know he'd end up performing in front of thousands before the day was over. So let's take a look at how he got on. That is New Orleans, exactly how I imagined it. A brass band going down the street and a whole crowd following them, getting into the vibe. Fantastic. Now the city might be best known for jazz, but you can also find a type of music here that I've never encountered before. Chubby Carrier is a Grammy Award winner and the third generation of a legendary Zydeco playing family. The music, Zydeco. Tell me about it. Zydeco music, a lot of people get it mixed up with Cajun music. But if you hear Zydeco music, you're going to hear more of blues, R&B, soul, and rock and roll mixed in one. This, Chubby says, is the expression of Louisiana's black Creole community. That's a bit of African, a bit of French, and some Caribbean all mixed up. And apart from the accordion, Chubby says the essential instrument in the Zydeco sound is the one that evolved from his grandmother's washboard. This is my grandmother's washing machine. This is, washing my, machine. This is her washing machine back in the day. And you hear the rivulets? The buttons on your shirt would make that little sound like this. And the grandmother was washing clothes at the time. And of course, the daddy that was playing the washboard was going, hey, that thing sounds good. It might fit with the, with the uh, guardian. Bring it over here. She said, you must be out of your mind. This is how I do my laundry. Can I? You should try, man. Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's, our, it's our percussion in Zydeco. <laughs> oh, you think that with that? And, and the left hand. It's, you had the rhythm going like this in the air. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's but, it. Thing, but when you hit the board, you yeah. lose it. I know why. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> The streets are packed, and there's a jubilant atmosphere here. I feel lucky to have a ringside view. Because when he point that camera to you, I want you to shake in your booty like your mama gave it to you. We're going to send this back to London and let them know how we do it in New Orleans, right? Huh? And then, after my frankly disastrous 10-minute lesson, this happens. BBC 
sea travel here. London, England, y'all. Well, I've got to say, Rajan didn't do a bad job there, or perhaps the crowd were just being kind. <laughs> okay, up next, we're off to Denmark, a country that's famous for its annual Roskilar Music Festival, where over 150 bands usually take to the stage every year. Now, unfortunately, the festival's been canceled this year due to the pandemic. But to keep you going, why not submerge yourself in this film from Denmark with Krista back in 2018? But just a word of warning, please don't try this one at home without a snorkel. This is the group Between Music. Their latest show is the first in a four-part series called Aquasonic, which aims to explore who we are as human beings. And it begins with our time in the womb. We are so often divided between you and me, them and us, different religions, different cultures. But here's something that I think we all know something about. We have our first uh, nine months uh, covered by this water filter. So I think somehow the audience, I, I think they, they on a, at least on an unconscious uh, level, will have a, a flashback to, to hearing those sounds. So as performers, how does it feel when you're underwater performing to an audience? It gets you this, somehow, it's, someone says a loneliness to it. That there is a, not only visually loneliness to see these humans in the tanks, but also the sound has a kind of a loneliness to it. And that, I think it's quite a nice idea. So here goes, one deep breath and, well, All right. actually this is quite nice. Amazing. You're doing good? <laughs> it's, really, it's lovely and warm. Yeah? Yeah, this is great. So if you take this uh, microphone that is hanging and then you hit this bell plate. Can uh -huh. you see that one? Yes, this one here. Yeah. And then you take the microphone and put it to water. Do you hear that uh, Ooh, effect? That buzzing. <laughs> And then you can sort of play with it. I'm beginning to think I'm a bit of a natural. And then maybe you should just pull the dabuka in the front w window. <laughs> and then you can sort of, if you hit it with, one, with the hammer, then you can like close the sound oh. with your hand. Another thing, if you take the, there's a small stick on the top of the, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can use that for the ring over there oh, with the holes okay. in it. Ooh. <laughs> That's so cool. It's so much fun. You're making music. Woohoo! <laughs> It's amazing, you have these hammers that, that uh, when you hit, it resonates through the whole tank. You can feel them in your chest and your body. It's amazing, it's a totally different experience than just banging a bell with a hammer. Yeah. Krista there getting her avant-garde groove on back in 2018. Well, stay with us because we've plenty more still to come here on The Travel Show. <laughs> and mixing! <laughs> Including the time Addy raised the roof at London's Ministry of Sound nightclub. And Rajan's knees took a battering at one of the most bizarre festivals we've ever seen in Germany.
Well, nightlife around the world has taken a massive hit during the pandemic. In many places, nightclubs are amongst the first to be forced to shut down, and it looks like they'll be amongst the last to finally reopen again. Now, if you're missing your clubbing fix, take a look at this. A film from back in 2017, when Addy got the chance to learn how to master the decks at one of the most famous super clubs in the world. Ministry of Sound is celebrating 25 years. I can't believe it, because I came here in the early days. Now this place started off as a small club in a derelict garage, and it's since become a massive global brand. In fact, at one stage, it owned the biggest independent record label in the world, selling over 70 million records. Ministry of Sound was London's first ever super club and has survived a number of attempts to shut it down. Justin Berkman is one of the founders. He's also one of its resident DJs. So I'm in good hands for this DJ lesson. You've got your volume controls here. You've got your highs, mid and lows. So you, your bass knob, this is the big bass knob. Give it a little bit of sibilance. Strip that out, bring that down. With the technology today, it gives you much more flexibility to, to take risks and do things that you couldn't do in the old days with vinyl. So could you put like um, a, a classic opera track with um, some hip hop? Yes, um, Beethoven wrote most of his music in 120 BPM, so he was one of the first house DJs. Oh, Beethoven knew what he was talking he about, did. So he dropped beats. He did, and a lot of his stuff was dance music speed. Let's do this then. Okay. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, three two, two, nine, four, four, two, three, four. Bingo. <laughs> I'm mixing! <laughs> <laughs> now time to see if all that training has worked. It's the moment of truth. I tell you what I will say is it's very loud in here. I'm in the DJ box with Gavin Mitchell. He's the resident DJ and promoter for the gallery which takes place every Friday night at the club. Now fortunately it's still early so the pressure's off a little bit and I'm getting the hang of things. By the end of the night, I've got the house rocking. I think all clubs have their nemesis moment where there comes something along that wants to close it. Uh, it's usually residents and it is the balance between a city and the fact that it needs some form of entertainment. You can't have one without the other because a city full of bedrooms is no fun. So you have to have nightclubs, you have to have restaurants, you have to have bars, you have to have entertainment. Addy at the Ministry of Sound back in 2017. Well, time now for something a little more sedate. Back in 2018, Carmen headed to Taiwan to explore a gigantic new art center about to reopen, claiming to be the biggest in the world. And in amongst the massive performance and exhibition spaces, she got to fulfill one of my childhood dreams, playing one of those huge dramatic pipe organs. Yeah, I'm pretty jealous about that one. This is the Wei Wu Ying. Taiwan's brand new National Art Centre. The centre has been built to become a fixture on the international performance circuit. So this might look like a big empty warehouse, but we're actually backstage at one of the more intimate auditoriums here. It can seat around 1,200 people. The centre will stage its own performances and host international touring productions. The Wei Wu Ying has four main stages, an opera house, a concert hall, a playhouse and a recital hall. This splendid venue can seat over 2,000 people. 
After rehearsal, organist Tony Liu kindly offers to show me the pride of the concert hall. Hey. Hi, wow, wow Tony, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah, I thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> what does it feel like to play such a magnificent instrument? Yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, because, uh, you know, um, I can make any kind of uh, music in here. And uh, very, very high pitch here. Ooh. Like birds. And uh, very, very low. We do have very, very low pipes. Oh. You can hear entire horse vibrating. Wow. How coordinated do you need to be? There's a lot of keyboards. How many are there here? One, two, three, four, five. Five keyboards and 127 buttons, not to mention all these chords down the bottom. Uh, we do, we, I do have to uh, spend a lot of time to practice. This one is a brand new organ, and uh, also I believe it's the biggest one in the entire Asia's concert hall. Wow, the biggest pipe organ <laughs> yeah, in pipe Asia. Organ, yeah. What a privilege to play it. Do you want to play something? Oh, okay. I, know, I know you play piano. <laughs> I haven't played in 20 years. <laughs> okay, I can try. Yeah, yeah play a little bit song. Yes. Okay. It's in. Thank you, Tony. You're, You're such a good sport to humor me. <laughs> Carmen Roberts accepting bookings to play to packed concert halls all around the world as soon as travel kicks back in. Or maybe after a bit more practice. OK, so to finish off this week, we're off to Germany. We're back in 2016. Rajan headed to Bavaria to learn how to play one of the strangest musical instruments I've ever seen. Now, if you're thinking about taking this one up, I'd highly recommend some earplugs and knee pads. You'll see what I mean. The festival takes place in the town of Rinchnach and celebrates the ancient custom of herdsmen ringing bells to scare wolves away. Hans. Hello. Hello. Hans is one of the organizers. These are the famous bells that I've heard about. This is actually überall ausgestorben, nur bei hier in Rinchnach hat sich diese Tradition gehalten und ist eigentlich auch gewachsen. Das muss man eigentlich so sagen. Tonight, hundreds of local people will form teams of bell ringers. And I'm joining in too, a rare privilege for a non-Bavarian. First, I need the right outfit. And what is the point of these twigs? It is gedacht for the Fliegen im Sommer. Because ah. durch diese Bewegung bleiben die Fliegen einfach weg. I'm going to look like a Christmas tree. Oh, no. <laughs> good? Very good. Very good. Yeah. The headgear pales into insignificance once I realise I'll be lugging this 20 kilogram bell around. You're the Glock. Okay. I'm the Glock. <laughs> so heavy, it's ridiculous. The technique is very simple. Man muss nur versuchen, diese Glocke aus diesem Oberschenkel heraus, also nicht die Glocke auf die Knie zu schmeißen, weil das ist nicht so gut, sondern die eher auf der Innenseite Oberschenkel, weil sie dann abrollt. Die Glocke rollt dann ab. Und dann, wenn Sie zum Schluss versuchen, weit nach oben zu heben. Das ist das ganze Spiel. Okay, so I'm taking this bell over to the house here. And I think there's some people here who have been doing it as well. Did you hear me coming by any chance? <laughs> oh. So you two are also taking part this yes, year? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. How big a night is this for you? I think it's uh, the biggest night of the year, uh, something like this. Yeah, nowhere else is something like this. And so, yeah, we're very proud of it and we also want to take part of it. Have you ever thought about wearing earplugs? Yes, I have. Oh, you have them? Oh, right. <laughs> yes. I think, uh, yeah, you, you it's, have to. it's impossible without them. OK, right. I'll well, bear that in mind. That's very good advice. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah! 
I join the rest of the team as we head towards the town centre. Nothing could have prepared me for the incredible din that's generated heaving these enormous bells around. I'm trying not to use my knees, but it's almost impossible. They feel battered and bruised already. We're greeted by a huge crowd of tourists and locals. Hans' son, Dominic, is the flamboyant leader, rousing the troops, leading the beat. And conducting the cacophony. Luckily for me, after half an hour, Dominic calls time for a much needed break. Wow, that was one of the most physically intensive thing as I've ever done. Amazing. <laughs> Tribal, but great. And I deserve this. Rajan in 2016, and those bells look just crazy. I'm sure there's some new form of exercise routine just waiting to be invented because it looks like a total workout carrying those bells strapped to your waist, let alone playing them. Well, that's it for this week, but do join us next week if you can, when... It's my turn behind the wheel of our travel show van for the next stage in our road to recovery trip across the UK. <laughs> I'll be in Wales exploring Cardiff and beyond and finding out how this furry rodent is helping the fight against climate change. That's next week, but don't forget to check us out on social media for a whole host of inspirational ideas of things to see and do when we can all travel again, which hopefully won't be too far away. Till next time, though, from me, Lucy Hedges, and everyone else here on the show, it's goodbye. Goodbye.